Welcome to this episode of the Structural Engineering Channel podcast, a podcast focused on helping structural engineering professionals stay up to date on technical trends in the field and also help them to succeed in their careers and lives. I'm your co-host, Alexis Clark. I'm a licensed professional engineer in Texas, and I graduated with a bachelor's in civil engineering from UT Austin. I work at Hilti North America's headquarters as the product manager for chemical anchoring portfolio in the US and Canada. In this very special episode, I'm gonna interview my co-host, Matt Picardle. Matt hosts a very popular YouTube channel, Structural Engineering Life, through which he promotes the structural engineering profession to engineering students that are not familiar with the industry perspective. In this episode, Matt is gonna to talk to us about what he has learned from building his YouTube channel. Matt is a licensed engineer practicing on structural engineering projects in California with an undergraduate degree from Cal Poly Pomona and a master's in structural engineering from UC San Diego. He has designed and managed various types of building structures, including residential wood apartment buildings, commercial steel buildings, and concrete parking structures and towers. Today, he's gonna to share with us a peek behind the curtain of his YouTube channel for structural engineering topics with over 25,000 subscribers. Before we dive into this week's conversation, just a short reminder that while most of us are under quarantine right now, EMI is still publishing free content for engineers almost daily. Just visit engineeringmanagementinstitute.org and click on content to read articles, listen to podcasts, or watch videos, all focused around helping engineers succeed in their careers and life. Matt, thanks for joining us today here on the Structural Engineering Channel podcast. <laughs> Hey Alexis, yeah, it's yeah. Thanks for having me. I mean, I'm usually here. So no, you're usually on this side just, of the table. Yeah, so it's 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 interesting to just be on the other side, but it's it's pretty cool. So you know, I'm uh, excited to share all this stuff that I learned, and um, excited with the with today's topic to to share what I've been learning throughout all this. Good, because I have some I have some pretty juicy questions for you, so you need to buckle awesome. up for those. All um, right. Before we go too much further, obviously I gave you a brief introduction. Matt, can you just tell us a little bit more about your history as a structural engineer? Um, your path getting here, um, projects that you work on, stuff like that? Yeah, sure. So I got my undergrad at Cal Poly Pomona, master's at UC San Diego, like you said. And, you know, I've had a lot of internships. I think I had about three or four internships during my, from undergrad to grad school. And then that's how I pretty much got into the structural engineering industry. I had some civil engineering internships and structural. Then, you know, after I graduated, then I got my first uh, my first position at uh, DCI Engineers, and that's where I'm still at right now. And yeah, it's been really cool. I mean, it's I've been there's always something to learn, at least um, with the projects that I have and kind of the position that I've been put in. There's obviously a lot of responsibilities, but lots of cool projects, and there's always something new to learn in terms of maybe a new material, a new building, and um, and even like get, getting into the project management and more of the business side of things. It's, it's been really cool and that's why I'm still, you know, still excited about this profession. There's so much to learn, not just in the structural engineering technical portions, but also the management and business aspects as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And to be a really successful, well-rounded engineer, you need to know more than just the technical. It is about knowing those different aspects. So I like that you shared that with our listeners. So just to dive straight into the topic, talking about your YouTube channel today, Structural Engineering Life. What inspired you to start a YouTube channel? That's not something most structural engineers do every day. No, it's not. Um, you know, it kind of started off with, I went to a career fair. We were, you know, recruiting interns and, you know, students for our company and then you know just looking at the resumes talking to the students you know they didn't know too much about the structural engineering industry you know about what we actually do you know i think it's you know it's it's what they learn in school and then you know once you transition it's a tough transition but then i looked back on my path it was like yeah i didn't know anything about the industry either you know when i first got into the industry my first internships you know it was like shell shock oh that's not what we learned in school that's not how we do it exactly in the industry you know and um and things like that and a lot of students didn't really know about that you know when i'm talking to them and i was like how did i get into it well fortunately for me i had someone that did work in the industry you know that went to grad school and i could ask him questions about hey what's grad school like do i need to go to grad school 
what about the structural engineering uh, industry? What firms are good? What firms aren't good? Uh, what type of positions are there? And fortunately, I had that one person. If I didn't have that one person, um, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I am today and probably getting into the structural engineering industry too. But I realized that not, you know, like there's a lot of people like that, but that didn't have that person, that, that contact where they can find out more about the structural engineering industry. And, you know, that was one of my things about of starting the channel, get, get that resource out there for students that are interested in, in the industry. And yeah, I also looked at, I kind of forgot about it. I looked at, um, looked online, it's like all this stuff that I was Googling online, you know, when I was a student, there wasn't anything there for the most part. And then I just figured once I got into the industry, eh, someone else will do it, you know, someone will provide those resources. But then after that career fair that I went to, I looked online and yeah, there was stuff online, but it was like in the Reddit forums where <laughs> yeah. everyone hated their lives and, you know, there's a lot of negative things about the industry. Okay. And if you're a student, that's what you're doing. You're you're going online, seeing what this industry you're getting into. And if all you see are those negative posts about, you know, about the industry and they, some one particular person just had a really bad experience and mm -hmm. he's posting all this negative stuff. Well, that's what the students are reading because there's yeah. not enough positive uh, content out there. So that was another motivating factor for me was like, hey, this there should be like more positive stuff out there. Absolutely. Because I talked to a lot of structural engineers, you too, like, you know, they love their jobs. It's a great industry. It's a great profession. It is. But there's just not enough of us to uh, putting stuff out there on the internet where everyone's at to, mm -hmm. to help inspire the next generation to come over. It's, it's only, you know, I think there should be more, more of it like there because the majority of, you know, the profession, it's like, you know, it's, it's great. But if more of us can just put more positive content out there, it'll help inspire the next generation, you know, attract Absolutely. the best and brightest. I, I love that. I think that's so true. And I, it really, I mean, it, it goes back to the saying, be the change you wish to see in the world. I think that's all it really is. So thank you for taking up arms and, and grabbing it by the horns. I love it. Matt, for those of us who have never started a YouTube channel before, can you tell us what was the biggest barrier to this entire journey that you've been on? What was the, what was the biggest struggle you've had? So in terms of starting the, of just wanting to start a channel, I think the biggest obstacle is not really coming up with the topics. Um, for me, it was, if you're anything like me, you're, you're introverted and you're shy, but you know a lot of, of, uh, you know a lot of things already. You've been in the industry for a while, or even if you just got into the industry, um, you know something and you want to share it with people. And for me, that was that was the situation for me. I had like these two inner voices, like, "Hey, you know all this stuff. You can help out a lot of students, and you know, you just just share share your experiences because it can really help them out because you were in the same situation. And you know, these are things that they should know, but no one's teaching them or no one's putting it out." So that was one voice, the positive voice that really wanted me to push. But then there's also this other voice where it was like, you know, what gives you the right to put out content? You're, you don't have your PhD. You're not smart enough. You don't have enough experience. Um, what are people going to think? Um, you know, you don't, uh, you don't look good on camera. You're not good at speaking. Uh, so all these things, all that stuff is like holding you back or was holding me back from from putting out that content. Like I already had all the content, I'm living the content, you know? And um, all that other stuff, that, that second voice, it was kind of just like, I think that's the hardest part for people, like getting over that, getting over that fear of, oh, you're, you're gonna expose yourself to people, you know? And, and for me getting over that, it's because I guess the way I got over it was just talking to people. And what, one of the things that I realized was, basically looking at it as um, I have the ability to do it and I have the responsibility to do it because I can help people and people need help. Uh, do I have the ability? Yeah, we have all these tools in front of us, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all this social media stuff. So mm -hmm. you can do it. Um, and to me, it was like, hey, it's your responsibility to, to do it because you can help people out and you have all the knowledge. So what's What's stopping you? Like, why are you being so selfish? You care more about yourself and your feelings and all the things that are holding you back than 
then just putting the content out there that can help a lot of people. And I know a lot of people know stuff. And what's, what's kind of tragic is when they, they want, they want to share it, but they don't because if they did share it, then so many people could have just benefited from it. It could have helped their lives. It could have helped them at the work. It could have advanced their careers, but they never shared that. So I think that's the real tragedy of people, you know, kind of giving into that. Oh, I'm not good enough. Or no one wants to listen. So by making that choice and sharing it, I mean, you can help a lot of people. And I think that outweighs a lot of, of all those uh, inner demons, I guess, or those low self-confidence things. Well, that's such a fantastic motivator is doing it for others and not for yourself. But it's hard because what you're doing is like everything that goes against imposter syndrome. And I know I, I suffer from imposter syndrome like many of us do who are young in industry, whether we're perceived as less tenured or... Um, you know, various other reasons why you may feel that way. Um, you're kind of going above and beyond and trying to combat that because you're not only saying, oh, hey, I can do this. It's I'm going to put this on stage for everyone to see. So it's it takes a lot of strength to do that. And I think that is amazing. And I'm glad that you took up this, um, maybe like a mantra of almost responsibility to others is greater than my own self-doubt. That's really yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, because that, now it's not about you anymore. It's about other people. Mm-hmm. And then that way, that's how I got over it, kind of like putting it in that position um, that, you know, I should help people out because I can and I have the ability to. And um, whatever I don't know, I'll learn on the way. Like, like, like you said, or I mean, everything's just skill-based. I didn't know how to speak. Um, I took a public speaking class. That definitely helped. But I'm still not like the world's best speaker. I still mess up <laughs> on camera a lot. So just yeah. learning on the way and knowing that it's a journey. So definitely like you're not going to be good the first time, but you need to take that, that first step if you really want to, you know, do something like this. So. Um, so just to kind of clarify, so the audience that you're really going after for the most part is the, is the student likely in college or in grad school who are already in pursuit of a structural engineering career path, maybe. Yeah, my main audience is uh, students and young professionals that are okay, young professionals. probably in their uh, five years or less. Okay. Basically, my audience is whoever I was. <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> the step right above, right? So We're if you're, calling all the mats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if you've been in the industry for less than five years, hey, I can show you what I know. Obviously, I can't be like, I can't tell you how to go above what I've Uh, done in terms of like, hey, how to be a business owner, how to be a principal, how to be an associate or whatnot, because I haven't done it. But Mm -hmm. hey, I've been that young engineer that didn't know anything. And now I'm getting into project management. So I know a little bit about that and sharing my lessons that that I'm learning in that position too. So and I've been a student. So whatever I've been in the in the past, like I can help you out because I've been there. I don't need to be like some certified student expert or whatnot. It's, hey, I've done it and I'm living it and I can show you what I know and hopefully it helps you out in, um, in, in one way or another. Absolutely. It's mass mentorship or is it yeah. match mentorship? <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw uh. one bad pun in here. In this quarantine, my, my level of humor and sophistication has just gone right down. So we're going to go, we're going to get some really a lot bad more puns. puns. Yes. Yeah, so many puns. <laughs> Perfect. So um, we've talked a little bit about your audience you've got a really wide range of topics on your channel. It's awesome. So there seems to be a lot about awareness. So you have the day in the life of the structural engineer. You have what is structural engineering. You have a little bit about coaching, which is really, it seems to be your passion. Um, you've got stuff about grad school, how to pass a licensure exam, how to get an internship or build your resume. And then you've got some that are even technical, which I think is, is really uh, nice as you start to talk about what it's like to be a project manager, what are some of these technical topics and how do I make it digestible for my audience? You've got earthquake engineering, you've got which post-tension concrete lit- literature you have ready, which I enjoy. That's, that's the real nerdy one that I really like. <laughs> um, how is it that you, I mean, you have an audience, how is it you determine what, what content you want to develop next? What's relevant? What makes sense? Sure. If for me, and I think if it was, it's basically just what was the stuff that I wanted to know when I was a student, when I was first year structural engineering profession, second year, third year, all the things that I wish somebody would have like told me so I could have saved myself a bunch of time. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty much how I create my content. Like, hey, what steel books are there? What are there some good steel um, examples where I can get, you know, some 
some good materials, some resources for this project I'm working on. And it, it was a lot of, uh, what do you call it? Self-research. Like these are the things that I would Google online. What are the best post-tension concrete books? What are yeah. the best steel books, et cetera? What are the best resources? And yeah, so all those things, it's all the things that, that I wanted to know and all the stuff that I Googled, it's, that's pretty much how I uh, create my content because uh, again, it's, I guess my audience is what I would have told myself when I was in that position. I love and it. yeah, I think that's something if someone's thinking about doing, Hey, that's the easiest way to go about it. Like what, what were you, what were you doing? What were you searching for? Yeah. And there's, there's, <laughs> there's always someone in that same position that you were in before and they want to get to where you're at. Of course. Do you get a lot of organic requests from your, from your audience? Yes, actually that too. Like uh, in the comments, um, like someone suggested uh, structural engineering reality versus expectations. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, that's a good topic. And so <laughs> that whenever, very funny. yeah, so when someone like requests a, a comment or something, you know, I have like my Trello board or your to-do list and, you know, I just take their comment, put it in there. And when I'm trying to create content, hey, I got my own pieces, but then I also get um, a lot from the audience and that mm -hmm. definitely helps out a lot too. So I definitely try to mix in, in both of those. I love it. That's awesome. Um, so I mentioned earlier that you had 25,000 subscribers to your channel, which is no small feat. How is it that you managed to grow your channel so quickly? And how is it that you sustain engagement with your audience to where you continue to grow that base of, of subscribers? Um, you know, I think it's really just about, you know, it's, it's crazy. Like, yeah, 25,000. It's like, I can't even imagine that many people, but you know, it's <laughs> luckily it's been, it's been able to turn out like that. And in terms of the growth on how I, I guess got that much, it, it, I think it really has to do about knowing, uh, first of all, knowing who your audience is and caring for your audience. I think those are the two main attributes because if you know your audience, you know what they want to see. And it doesn't have to be all fancy and whatnot. I think the day in the life uh, video was something that I Googled when I was a, a student, like what's the day in the life of a structural engineer. And all I did was take my camera and just took it with me to the office. And I didn't even talk. I was just like, Hey, you know, I just took my camera and just documented my day. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that the audience would want to see that because that's something that I wanted to see and something that they're Googling, um, that definitely helped out in the growth because knowing a little bit about YouTube too, because YouTube is a search engine. So if I Googled it, I know someone else is Googling it around the world. And there's some like applications where you can kind of figure out uh, what the keywords and whatnot to get a little technical. You, t you can figure out how many uh, searches there are for a particular term, like what are the best steel books? So Google's a search engine, YouTube, or Google owns YouTube. So YouTube's mm -hmm. also a search engine. So that's one tactic uh, you can do to, to kind of uh, boost your, your viewings to see what, what people are searching for. And that comes back to uh, knowing your audience. What are they searching for? Mm -hmm. and well, it sounds also, like there's a little bit of engineering there too with, this, with the keyword optimization. Yeah, exactly. Like there's um, learning a little bit about marketing, uh, engineering, and learning how these kind of even business too. I mean, like if you get into YouTube, you treat YouTube as your client. What does YouTube want? Like, what do they really want? Like, and if you go through like the analytics and whatnot, Hey, they want watch time. So like you said, reverse engineering, Yeah. Um, they first people are using YouTube as a search engine. So yeah, you basically figure out what people are searching for and then you format a video where it's, entertaining enough and educational enough that they would want to watch the whole thing mm -hmm. because if you help YouTube out by giving them watch time, they're going to help you out by showing your video to a lot more people. So Very there's a lot of stuff that um, you're able to learn just, by, I guess, going on this journey. Um, but also, like I said, knowing your audience and caring for your audience too. Like I take, it takes up a lot of time to, respond to a lot of the comments and mm -hmm. requests. And I try my best and I respond to almost all of them, but yeah, it, it does take a lot of time, but it also shows that, you know, you're there for your audience and mm -hmm. 
if they suggest a video and you make the video, uh, it shows that you're listening to them too. So yes, really it's exactly like, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's about them. It's about your audience. I think that's one of the fastest ways that you can grow is knowing what your audience is searching for, knowing how to help your audience and showing that your audience that you care, that you're there for them, that you're listening. So really it's about them and really not about me. It's just, I just share what I know to, to help them out. And I think that's the fastest way that you can grow your channel. I love that. That's awesome. That's really great wisdom too. And I think that that percolates into so many different aspects of life that you actually care about the people that are on the other end. It's going to make it really worthwhile for you and it's going to make it worthwhile for them. And that's, that's very transparent. I think that's very obvious in a lot of different ways. All right. So I'm going to take a, a slight turn downward. So I've seen, I know a lot of us have seen so many different articles in the past couple of years about how kids, um, particularly in the US and the UK, are at least, at least when I'm reading these different articles, three times as likely to want to be YouTubers or, or a vlogger, which I didn't even know that was a word until recently, uh, which is, is, it's hard for me to swallow. They'd rather be that than an astronaut. Um, and while I know that there are a ton of different people who are in the engineering and STEM professions, who spend their own time, you know, to work hard during e-week and throughout the year to bring awareness to children about these different technical professions. Right now, we live in a really interesting time uh, in which we have more and more children consuming all this different content on YouTube and different channels on the internet. Um, and it's even more compounded now that we're in this quarantine social distancing world. So I'm, I'm curious, what are some of the ways that our listeners can incorporate some of the STEM activities that they would be doing in their schedules and, and channel that into outreach like you're doing through media like YouTube or other different internet avenues? Yeah, that's a good question. So it's, it's kind of like asking, how do you find time to do this stuff? How do you find to do these extracurricular activities while, mm -hmm. you know, you're probably a working professional that works at least 40 hours a week and you may have a family and you may have other extracurricular activities. And so for me, what I did and my advice to people that, uh, particularly civil engineers, uh, doesn't really matter what geotech or whatnot or structural, but use your profession as, as your content, like document what you're doing instead of just spending three hours trying to come up with, um, what to say or what to do or or what content should i create hey what you're doing right now someone wants to be in if you're a structural engineer uh, someone wants to be a structural engineer what are you doing right now in the office like what did you work on today mm -hmm. that's the easiest way to integrate both of those things to um uh, so you don't have to spend all this time outside or your weekends coming up with content and ideas and scripting and all this stuff it's that's the easiest way just document what you're doing like like i think with one of my videos uh, the day in the life one yeah that's all i did i just took my camera with me to the office <laughs> like i didn't even talk i didn't script anything i just went to work and just turned the camera on and people want to see that because there's not enough uh engineers that are doing it there's plenty of other you know that you see on youtube youtubers doing it people want to see that people want to see people like you're seeing in this quarantine too it's like yeah. There's still that people <laughs> aspect. Um, they want to know what you're doing, and that's the Facebooks and that's the Instagrams. You may not think people want to see that, but they do, and mm -hmm. the numbers prove it. Like people want to know what your day's like, what the profession's like, and you don't have to create anything. You're already doing it at work. So maybe you're working on some project. You can document what you've learned. Um, even like with me some of the things that I did it for was I was conducting interviews for uh, interns. Like we're trying to recruit interns, interviewing interns. And I just go over, I make a video about, Hey, here's what, you know, how, what we're looking for in interviews or how to improve your resume. And it's, mm -hmm. it's all the stuff that I've already done at work. And now I'm just regurgitating it or just pressing record and learning the lessons that I learned. And it didn't take me extra time except just pressing that record button. And I think that's the easiest way you can integrate um, these STEM activities is you're already doing it, uh, just share it. <laughs> Press the record button or, or blog about it or, or do a podcast about it. But the important thing is to share it, you're already doing it. I love it. I think that's such an easy thing that everyone can take back and, and implement to their own life is we're already doing the work of, of an engineer 
document it. I love that. That's very simple. Um, I think a lot of us, I'm very intimidated by some of the people like yourself who are a little bit more um, savvy in doing video editing or even, I, I don't use, um, what is the one that they, Photoshop, Photoshop. I, clearly, I don't know Photoshop. Um, but when I think about all of the different media outlets um, or even you know self-taught people like yourself who just start this up, sometimes they create really fantastic content and it looks nice or you know the video editing is really strong. And for me, that's an intimidating factor is that's not a strength of mine and it's not necessarily an interest that I wanna pursue to learn to be better at. And so I think when you make it as easy as just document what you're doing and put it out there, it makes it a lot more digestible and it makes it something you can really put your arms around and, and, and embrace and wanna actually pursue. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, it doesn't even have to be technical. I know, I know you're getting into more of the sales, uh, the technical sales. I mean, there's a lot, plenty of people that want to get into that for more of the extroverted engineers and whether you're, te so whatever you're doing, whether you're technical or, or um, in whatever aspect of the engineering side you're in or even in the mm -hmm. business, it's, there's something that um, someone wants to be in, in, in your position. Like you have advice for people and I know you already mentor a lot of uh, students and whatnot so you're doing a great job at that but if more people did that i mean it's a lot more resources for people and you know like you said like i know it's intimidating and uh yeah i was self-taught but the good thing is you know when you first start your videos you know that no one's gonna watch it <laughs> so it's like There's you have that. time to <laughs> you have time to get better like my first video oh man it was uh it was like a two minute intro video and it took me like almost like an hour or two hours to just shoot that thing. Cause I just kept being like, Oh, that was, that was stupid. No, I, I stuttered. Um, no, that, 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 that's not what I wanted to say. Oh no, I look stupid there. The lighting's off and <laughs> whatnot. So for a two minute video, it took me like definitely more than an hour and then more hours editing all the mistakes out just to make it into a two minute video. But that's, I mean, that's the first step, you know, you get better and, um, it's a journey. It really is. You're going to suck and it's, it's fine. Like, you know, you're going to suck, but then you're just going to keep gradually getting better and better and better and better. And yeah. And I think that's, what's cool. People can see your journey too. Like it's kind of like a documentary of what you went through. That is very cool. I like the way you phrase that as a documentary of your own growth. That's good. And no one starts out as a natural. Everyone has to learn, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, so the next few questions that I have are kind of a personal interest, but I think that especially at this point in the episode, if, if we have listeners who are interested in doing this on their own and now they're finding, hey, I have a little bit extra time than I used to not have um, and I want to start dipping my toe into this, this content creation world, um, I have a couple of questions specific to either episodes that you've done or um, how you're coming up with your ideas. Sure. So, I'm curious for you. So I looked at your uh, episode, Reality Versus Expectations, which has over 170,000 views. And I, I was cracking up the entire time. It was fantastic. <laughs> you had a lot of different nuggets of wisdom throughout that entire episode. Um, what, is, what are top three of the biggest things you would want to share with our listeners here? In terms related to, to that episode on like reality versus expectations? Yes. Yeah, so for me, you know, the first thing I always tell students is that are trying to get in, like, you're not going to know anything. Like, like really, once you get into the structural engineering industry, you're really not going to know a lot. And that's going to be, that's completely okay. We'll teach you and we'll mentor you. And, you know, we're expecting you to ask questions. Um, I think a trap is that you get into the industry and then you do realize, oh, I don't know anything. Like, <laughs> then you start feeling down on yourself. Like, oh, why am I so stupid? Um, how come I didn't do that? How come I don't know this? Um, how come I have to spend so much time on this? Um, no, it's okay. We, we know that. We've been in your position too. So it's not like um, you're doing it. You're not the first person to go through this. So I think that's one of the first things that I want to say is, hey, you're not going to know anything, but that's okay. If, if you keep that attitude of, asking questions and always wanting to learn more and being curious. Um, I think that's what a lot of firms are looking for, that curiosity. You're not afraid to uh, ask questions and give, give even your insights on, 
on your problem solving solutions on like, mm -hmm. hey, here's a problem that I solved. Here's what I think um, might work. And it may not work. That's fine. But you're going to learn something when you ask your, your manager or whatnot. So knowing that it's okay that you don't know anything, um, that it really is a, at this point in the, I guess, the structural engineering industry, you know, the education system, at least in my opinion, hasn't caught up with or prepared them enough for the structural engineering industry and what we actually do. Okay. And that's fine. Like, and firms are expecting that. So definitely don't feel bad if you don't know anything. And um, the second thing is, I think you guys should be aware of the business aspects. You know, when you work for a firm, it's knowing the bigger picture. I'm always a big proponent of, hey, knowing the bigger, the bigger picture of the project. So it kind of comes down to knowing the phases of a project, knowing how a project even gets into the firm's, into the, the firm's workflow mm -hmm. and what the clients are expecting, who are your clients, what they're expecting, what your manager is expecting, what phase are you in. So knowing the bigger picture and the different phases of the project that can definitely help you out in your career in terms of, in terms of uh, efficiency, because a lot of engineers okay. think, younger engineers, when they get into it, they think it's all about calcs, calcs, calcs. It's, it's not. We're running a business here. And yes, you have to find that right balance. And that brings me to my third point. What I think is uh, really good for newer engineers is make it as simple as possible. Uh, no simpler, because we do tend to go especially with all these softwares that we have, we tend to sometimes just jump straight into the software and just be like, hey, here's what the software gave me. And then your manager goes, how do you know that's right? Well, uh, because that's what it's, Spitting that's what out. the software is showing me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so really learn, like, I think that's another skill that you should learn when you get into the structural engineering profession is learning how to uh, build your intuition, build your, how to back check your own calcs mm -hmm. or especially what the program's doing. And some engineers think like, oh, you mean I have to know all this, all the technical stuff and et cetera. And like doing all these complicated uh, equations and do finite element analysis by hand. No, it's, hey, simplify it down to, uh, a simple beam problem do a statics problem yeah it's not mm -hmm. exactly as accurate but if are you in the ballpark at least or maybe even just all right you did a trust analysis on this program that you've never used before uh what and you're not sure that your modeling techniques are right why don't you try it on another program that you are familiar with are you getting the same values so really knowing how to check your work to check the work of the programs and knowing how to simplify things so you can get that feeling of, hey, yeah, this, this seems right, or this, this feels mm -hmm. right, you know, and, or that this is the behavior that we're expecting. So really simplifying things down to what they really just need to be. Not everything needs to be a finite element analysis. I like that. I like that. Simplify it, but no, no simpler. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, one that you posted most frequently was your home office setup uh, as you transition to the work from home life. Uh, which obviously is super timely. Yep. <laughs> Question for you about how, how do you get these out and how do you communicate these to your audience in a, an effective time manner where this, this content is very urgent. The more, the quickly, uh, the more quickly uh, a listener can listen to your topic, they can then implement and take whatever learnings they took and put it into their work life now when they're at work from home status. Um, how is it that you get information out quickly and make sure it reaches the most amount of people in a short amount of time? Uh, sure. It's, um, for me, it is really, I, yeah, it always comes back to like with all these events coming in, it's like, Hey, here's what I'm going through. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the SE exam got canceled. I know I'm not the only one. If you're taking the PE exam or the SE exam, you're feeling the same way that I'm feeling. So yeah, just making a video of it. It was like, you know, I found out about it. Oh, that sucks. Oh, here's, let me just turn on the camera because I know other people are feeling the same exact way that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So is that extra work? Not really. It's just me like pressing the camera <laughs> and, um, and in terms of structure for me, I, I used to script a lot, like mm -hmm. almost word for word when I was starting out, but now I can, I'm getting more into the habit of just bullet pointing my points. You know, I just don't want to rant, but kind of just having some structure so viewers can follow a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So just make, for me now, it's a lot more about bullet points. Hey, here's the thing that I want to go through. And then I'm getting better at speaking that way. So 
uh, improving my communication skills along the way <laughs> and and yeah knowing what what my audience was going through and and posting relevant content about that and like in terms of that desk video it was there's just so much negative stuff on the news about this whole you know COVID-19 thing and and whatnot it was like all right what do I want to see well I just want to see, a lot of people are posting their desk and it's oh that's that's fun like oh that's cool what do you have on your desk or how are you working from home mm-hmm. and so for me thinking about my audience you know what would they want to see like something fun and something cool something uh, visually appealing that's relevant to what we're all going through right now yeah um, and something not negative something a little more positive a little more fun okay uh, that's how I came up with that so knowing yeah, again, what everyone's going through. Um, okay, so you have so you have the draw because you have a relevant topic that's positive and interesting. How do you do the push? Do you just post it to YouTube and see who takes it or see who clicks on it? Do you post to your LinkedIn feed as well? How how do you, how is it that you get the message out? Oh yeah, so kind of like the marketing thing about that. So um, let me see the strategy behind that. So this this is gets gets a little more technical in terms of. Uh, the algorithms of YouTube and LinkedIn and and whatnot, but the way I come up with so in terms of YouTube, just to give you some YouTube tips, uh, the most effective ways is to see what's already been done before and what's been popular already. So I would Google things like uh, desk setup or desk tours and, and okay. whatnot. Again, it kind of goes into like the the title, what titles work, and what titles will make you click on. Well, that will make you want to click on the video. Okay. And so for YouTube, that's one of the things. And for LinkedIn, it's the same thing. It's how do I get people's attention so that they're interested in this, this, uh, this video. And at least for that video, um, I just took uh, snippets because in LinkedIn, if you're scrolling, you know, a lot of people have less attention spans than if they were on YouTube. So knowing that if I post like really cool shots, of like close-ups of the gear and you know putting some background music and just showing what the video is about in yeah. like the, the subtitles that's a good way to catch someone's attention while they're scrolling on linkedin it's a video okay it's a work from home and then it's like oh it's visually appealing and if they're interested they can click on that so it's kind of like um, definitely marketing and what people care about knowing what people care about knowing how to get people's attention um, because you can have the best content in the world, but if no one knows about it, or if you can't get people to pay attention, what's the point? <laughs> like, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's interesting, you keep bringing it back to doing research to see what other people are already looking at and trying to take some of those best practices and take some of those little snippets of what it is you're trying to create that's unique and, and adding it all together. It's interesting. It's an interesting formula. Um, the, the psychology behind marketing, and I'm still learning myself, and it's, definitely very interesting and especially when you're doing engineering marketing of some sort yeah for sure it's it's definitely uh definitely a lot to learn it's and yeah human psychology is interesting too and it's uh yeah. but it's cool because i mean i think everyone should learn something about it because the more we know about uh people the more you know we can i think promote the profession better because i think we all tend to keep to ourselves as an mm-hmm. industry but the more we market ourselves to the public yes there you go. <laughs> Stop complaining on why we don't get credit because we don't want to market ourselves. Totally. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And there's actually a really interesting, uh, just thinking really quickly, there was a really interesting session at NCSA this past year in Anaheim in California, Southern California, where you are. Um, and it was how to be a better uh, PR representative for structural engineering. It was very, very interesting. Um, lots of takeaways we could all be better at, I think. Yeah. So my final question, my final one. So I'm bringing it back to what I think is kind of your hallmark video, um, the day in the life of the structural engineer. Uh, almost 400,000 views as of this morning, which is very impressive. So wow. I've watched it a couple of times because I think it's hysterical. I love it. I think it's really fun. <laughs> um, first of all, I'm impressed that you blow dried your hair because you pulled out the blow dryer one more time than I do a day, which is <laughs> zero. <laughs> so I love you. Like got up, and you were you were getting ready. You moosed your hair. Um, I love that you showed, you know, it takes some coffee to fuel this big engineering brain and keep all the calcs running. 
Um, I like that it went for everything, to like including your little bit about, you know, your personal exercise and going to In-N-Out Burger, which I'm sure was a shout out to your Californians, of course. Um, <laughs> yep. But you did, you, you included things as, as familiar and as comfortable as here's my office workspace and this is what it looks when I go to a site visit. And um, you included, you know, being social and going to lunch with a colleague. Um, and you included little things about uh, how you use technology and modeling software in, in your day to day as well, which I just I think was such a well rounded example, just like you said, of things that you were already doing throughout your day and you just turned on the camera so that people could live it with you. As someone, I try to be really mindful of the content that I'm consuming because because like you mentioned, there's a lot of negative stuff out there. There's a lot of rep repetitive content out there. Um, I'm curious, how is it that you crafted each and every piece of this video and how did you, how did you choose what to include? Yeah, sure. So for the first part, like I did, I did my research and, you know, on YouTube, there's a lot of videos similar to that, but for different industries like the software engineering industry or any profession, you name it, there's a lot of videos out like that, but there wasn't anything for the structural engineering industry, the civil engineering industry. So that was, that's, how I first, that's how I first got my idea to, to dive into that. Doing research, hey, it has traction, let me try it. And in terms of you know, coming up with like the shots of what I wanted to do, um, it was pretty much just, okay, like what do I do in the morning? It was really, wasn't that complicated. Okay, you know, I go brush my teeth, I go do my hair, I get my keys, I drive to work. Mm -hmm. um, I had a site visit that day, so that was interesting, and then all the programs I worked out on, I know those softwares are pretty popular to see what, what we do, the type of softwares that we get into there. So I wanted to get some shots of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, going to lunch. So it was really much, pretty much just like, yeah, what I do on a daily basis. So in terms of coming up with what to shoot, well, <laughs> just doing the stuff that I've already, uh, I'm already doing that day. So it wasn't mm -hmm. too much to think about that. But, you know, even creating that video, I think that's what was the hardest part of uh, deciding to create that type of video. It's, you know, it's a personal video. It's, you know, I'm letting you into uh, my life, what I go through, uh, the shows I watch, the food I eat, um, what my routine is. And I know for a lot of engineers, that's like, oh, you're going to show the whole world that? <laughs> like, yeah, you're going to, you know, you're, you're exposing yourself to all this criticism. Oh yeah, and that to me that was the hardest part to um, post it. But I was experimenting, so I just did, I just did it, and I was just like, it's an experiment. And one of the lessons I learned from that video was, hey, that is the type of thing that people watch, whether you're an engineer or 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 not. I mean, we're all still people. We still want to know what goes on in each other's lives, and the more yeah. you let the audience in doesn't matter if they're engineers, um, the more connection you have with them. Because, you know, there's a lot of people that want to know that, but then a lot of people can relate with that too. Yes. And it's like, um, I think that's one of the key aspects too of, of people keep coming back because, you know, I'm not just like a robot that's just spitting Absolutely. out um, numbers. Yes. I'm showing you the lessons that I learned sharing my successes and my failures. I think that's probably the most important thing, sharing your failures um, so people can connect with you. Because Absolutely. like I, you know, I share my story about, I wasn't great at, at my GPA, I was an average student. And you know, like getting called out on, on, um, on some of the things that I did and like a lot of the failures that I did, like I wasn't the best students and definitely a lot of failures, but that's what people connect with the most because it's hard to connect with like a 4.2 student. Oh yeah. Like great, good for you if you're a 4.2 student. But <laughs> that I wasn't mean, a me lot either. Of... <laughs> it's okay. It wasn't me either. <laughs> well no, and, and being able to share your failures and your personal life and all those small little vulnerabilities, that really is the connection and, and the relatability that you're looking for to make it relevant content. I get that. Yeah, and it's tough, but that's I mean we're all people. That's what people connect with. We are all people. That's so beautiful. All right. So quick, quick, final question, I promise. I know, given my experience in engineering marketing, that you create a lot more content that ends that doesn't end up in the final cut. So you maybe create, you know, 200 hours worth of something and only 100 or even an hour's worth gets into the final print. Did you have any bloopers that didn't make it into it that you want to share with us? 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying to uh, there's, know. There's just so much like uh, mess ups in terms of because it's weird talking to a camera. Like yeah. you know, the final product is is um, it looks clean, but there's editing into that. And if you see my whole process, like you know, like I was telling you before, like that first video I made. Oh man, it was like the stupidest stuff. Like I just kept tripping over the words, like the simplest words, and and like uh, <laughs> like tripping up over a word like five times, <laughs> like, yeah. and then just like cursing on camera, like ah, oh, why can't I get this? And then mm -hmm. and then it turns into like an hour long shoot for like a two minute video. There's definitely things like that, and okay. um, I think yeah, in terms of like the behind the scenes, there's a lot of things like that where it just messes up, and it's it's kind of embarrassing just to be like, wow, it took you that long to just get through <laughs> that one sentence, because it is it's it's talking to a camera is very weird. I don't know why yeah. this is a lot easier. I think just having a person in front of you <laughs> definitely difference. helps, but just talking in front of a camera is. Just, I don't know it's just it's just odd and you just mess up on the most it doesn't feel natural stuff. i agree <laughs> <laughs> i agree perfect well i was just I, I had to ask that last one just because i always mess things up myself and so i was curious if you had any little fun ones to share but i really really appreciate the insight that you shared i think this is something everyone has the ability these are tools that are in everyone's hands we all have the power to use them for for good like you mentioned we can all be uh, a mentor to the masses if we wanted to share our experiences. So I'm hopefully, I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh, many of our listeners today have heard how it, how easy this can be if you just take the little bit of time to do it. And I, I'm, I'm very certain that you've inspired many people today. So thank you for joining us today, Matt. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Alexis. Wonderful. So for our listeners, we really hope that you did enjoy the conversation with Matt today. Um, we're always here and we love hearing your feedback, your comments, your questions. Uh, if you want to leave those, please visit structuralengineeringchannel.com. There you'll find a summary of all the key points that we discussed in today's episode, which is episode number 24, as well as links to the resources like Matt's YouTube channel, The Structural Engineering Life. Don't forget to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Until next time, we wish you all the best in your structural engineering endeavors. Music